thank you for letting us come into your house today and by the way of streaming, and we hope you get a blessing out of this Christmas service. It was pre-recorded because of all the COVID and all the sickness that this fall was passing around, so uh, please remember all our people when the church is sick with this, and we're remembering you too also. So if you have a prayer request you'd like for us to pray for you, you call here at the church, and we'd be glad to pray for that uh, need, that prayer request. Like I said today, we want to thank you for tuning in on this beautiful, beautiful Christmas day. And uh, hope you get a blessing out of the service today. This time we're going to have a word of prayer, and we're going to let a young lady in the church sing for you. And her name is Miss Tanya Stiffham, and uh, she will receive a good blessing to you. Let's just go to the Lord's prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you for this day. Lord, what it means to us that, Lord, that you sent your Son on this earth so we can have life and have it abundantly. Lord, we thank you today, dear God, for uh, all those that just turned in, that tuned in today to watch the uh, the broadcast. Lord, maybe something in their life will change. Maybe something will be said and done that they'll get a blessing out of the service today. Lord, we pray today, dear God, for those that's homebound today and can't get to churches. And Lord, we pray today, dear God, for those that's in our hospitals and our nursing homes and our special living homes. Lord, you know each and every need today. Lord, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. This time, Sister Tanya, come on.
Savior was born was definitely a very special night, and uh, I can I can just imagine here. I'm gonna read you some scriptures in the Bible, and and the very familiar passage of scripture, Luke chapter number two. In Luke chapter number two, we always heard of a Christmas story. I think Linus has told it to us several times in the Charlie Brown program, and uh, but. I begin to think about a little bit right here on, on the on the script, on the Christmas story. It said, and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there was in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign to you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swollen clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with a suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass that the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, Let us go even unto Bethlehem. And see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord had made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known the abroad the saying that was told them concerning the child. And all that they and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. We take a look at the scriptures we take about Christmas time, and we look at this one, and this is the one we were kind of most familiar with. And But I begin to think about the times that was back then. There was no television sets. There were no uh, no uh, lights, no Christmas trees up, no anything going on. But uh, they, it was a different time. You can imagine with no power, no uh, places like that. But I thought about how that the Bible talks about that there was a degree that from Caesar Augustus went out that all the world should be taxed. Can you imagine one man in a palace somewhere making a decree and the news had got around several ways back then by messengers that the whole world should be taxed. One man sent out the word that all the world should be taxed and all the people began to come to the place to be taxed, back to the place to be taxed. Now, I thought about how that the Bible said it all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And the Bible said that Joseph went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. I, we a lot of times picture this scripture as uh, a, in a hurried motion, that a baby is about to be born and they're hurrying to do everything, but I don't believe this was the matter I believe she was expecting getting close to time of her arrival, but they had to go to be taxed. And there was the reason there was no room found for them in the inn anywhere because there were several people there to be taxed. And some had probably came before them. And uh, they went around to the inns and they couldn't find a room. 
and we understand the story that uh, come up that they had found a manger and they had uh, I don't know if it was outside in an in, in open that uh, or some people say it was built in the rock of a cliff I don't know but it was a place where the animals were fed and the Savior was wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in that manger and the Bible says that uh, that they as they were there she brought forth this child and she laid him there and I, I wonder Many times as, as she's carrying this child and at the birth of the child, and uh, of course we read over where Mary pondered all these things and kept them in her heart, but I wonder a lot of times as she is bringing this child into the world, as she goes back and thinks about the angel and how the, the, the story was told that she was going to have a child and it would be a supernatural birth. I wonder how many times as Joseph was thinking as they sat there, I, I believe her delivery was a... Was a uh, uh, easy delivery. Uh, I believe when she came in the world, this was the son of God that she was giving birth to. I believe she still felt the birth pain, but I believe the day for day, this was no ordinary baby. Uh, somebody said, well, did the baby cry? Well, I'm pretty sure it was in this mortal flesh, and it knows hunger, it knows pain, it knows things. I'm sure the baby cried out in the flesh. Because our Savior knew about their pains and our sufferings that we came through in this walk of life, and he understood the birth of, of the birth of a child. And the Bible said that they was in the same country. There were shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. I, I'm wondering about the shepherds, the lowliest of all. And I'm thinking, uh, reading today, and I begin to look at some things about the shepherds in those days at the fields that they could have possibly been the shepherds that looked over the sheep for the sacrifice in the temple. They was chosen out for a reason that the angels had came upon them. But they were, these shepherds were chosen for a reason that the news would be delivered to them first. I'm glad today that Jesus Christ is my shepherd. He's my chief shepherd. And he leads and guides. We know his voice if we've been saved by the grace of God. We know his voice and he's not going to lead us wrong. He's going to lead us in the right path. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Now I can see these shepherds in a field. Uh, you and I have probably been in places and seen the open sky and seen the stars at night. Maybe a shooting star flies by or, or a fallen star or asteroid. Or maybe we see an aircraft go by. Maybe we see something we can't explain. But I wonder these shepherds as they looked up in the night sky without any of the technology that we have today and all the, everything began to light up and the angel Gabriel come on the scene. I believe it was Gabriel because I'm going to tell you something. He, 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 he talked a lot and he gave a lot of messages in the scriptures. The Bible don't say, but I can just understand, I can just see today that this angel had came out to these shepherds and, and, uh, began to talk to them about the birth, the miraculous birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For he said, the angel said unto them, fear not. Out of everything they've seen, they're standing there looking at the sky and probably all kind of wondrous things going on. And I, I don't know all that's going on. I know the Savior's born and the angel is standing there at these shepherds and they're probably frightened. Well, I would be. I, I think any normal man would be especially in those days without technology and all that we begin to think about the state and the sights and things we see in the sky people today still wonder about ufos and all these things but uh, those shepherds seen something glorious in heaven and as the angel began to speak he said fear not for behold i bring you good tidings of great joy when you see these hollywood pictures about science fiction i was talking about the ufos we always see a little green man get off the ship and say take me to your leader <laughs> But he began to say, fear not. You know today, in a day in which we live with all the COVID that's going around and all diseases, we're not supposed to be afraid as a child of God. We're supposed to turn it over to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that we're not supposed to be cautious. I'm not saying that, we're not, we're not, we, that COVID is not real because it's real. I, I'm not saying all these things to tell you that what we're dealing with is something false, but I'm telling you this today, friend, that Jesus Christ does not want us to fear those things that's coming upon us because the Bible, as a Christian, does not want us to fear. 
But I can just imagine the sight and the sounds that was going on in the fields that day as the sheep, as the shepherds were tending to the sheep. I don't know exactly how many they were there, but I, I'm sure there was fear upon them. Today the Bible teaches us to fear the Lord in certain ways, to respect the Lord, to respect God, to know who he is, to keep our light shining for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But the shepherds, as they tend in the field, they seen the glorious, the glorious signs and the glorious uh, sign, uh, vision or the thing that there was there. It was real to them, and it was real to happening. It wasn't just fake. It wasn't somebody bringing up some kind of uh, false program or something today, but it was real. The angel had appeared unto these shepherds and told them to fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. I'm glad today to know that salvation is joy. In Jesus Christ, there's joy. Uh, in all the times today in the world that we live in and we see so many things, that Christmas time comes around and we think about Christmas parties. And we think about today the things that they do. A lot of them today sometimes get into a Christmas party and they have all kind of drinks and they're poor and they're drunk and they don't realize the next day who they are or where they're going. They, they are so, that I don't call that partying. I've been there. <laughs> Not no fun. But in the day and age that we live in today, people when they party, they seem to uh, try to enjoy the things of the world, but yet when all of it's over, there's still an emptiness in their hearts and lives. After all the things that you go through, I can't say that the Bible says that sin is not good, fun, is not enjoyable, because the Bible says that over in the scriptures that the sin is pleasurable, for a season and when that life time's over or when that time's over friend I'll tell you something there's a there's an emptiness in your heart in your life that's because you miss Jesus Christ as your Savior if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior there's an emptiness in your heart no matter how much joy or having this happiness that you have doing the things that you need to do there's all there's always an emptiness in your heart if you don't put Jesus Christ first and foremost into your life. I believe when the angels appeared unto him, there was great joy after the word fear not. I believe there was a peace that came upon the angels. I remember I mean, the shepherds that the angels had mentioned to. Just as I, as I saved by the grace of God, when I came down, there was a great joy when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. There was so much love there in my heart that Jesus had showed me. That emptiness that, that the things I had tried to do before had been filled. Have I been a perfect Christian? No, no, there's nobody perfect. That's the reason we need Jesus Christ as our Savior. But all the news that he came to the shepherds was fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. There's great joy in our hearts and our life if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior. He said, for unto you is born this day. See, the gift of the Savior was to everybody. He said, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. I think about a lot of times when I was saved by the grace of God and let the Lord in my heart, in my life. You know, Jesus didn't stay in the manger. A lot of times we see nativity scenes and we see Christmas programs and they leave the baby in the manger and they don't tell what happened on the way through his life, that he had lived a sinless life on the face of this earth. He went around teaching everybody about God, pointing people to God. And today as a child of God, we're supposed to point people to Jesus Christ. And as he went around this world, he healed people, and he went to the cross of Calvary without sin, died on the cross, on the third day rose again for you and I, for you and I, the day that we can have life and have it everlasting. From the babe to the manger, is one of the greatest things that's ever happened to mankind is salvation. But I think about a lot of times that the message that the angel brought to them was fear not. In the day and age today, like I said, we don't need to fear a lot of things, but we need to reverence God. I remember a time back when I was a young man in church. You drive by a churchyard, it would never be cluttered up with cans of beer. And never be cluttered up with anything. People had always respected the house of God. 
day and age we live in, people break into the house of God to try to steal what its contents are inside. Listen, we still need to reverence God each and every day. But I want you to notice the Bible said, This shall be a sign unto you. You shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Why was Jesus laid in a manger? I believe because the first thing I believe, Brother David, is he was laid in that manger for all to be able to come to him. If it had been a house somewhere at his birth, there'd have been some people locked out probably and couldn't get in. But I tell you, the, the shepherds that we know of was the first visitors to the to the manger scene. I don't know how many was there, but they probably gathered around the manger scene and viewed the birth of Christ and probably thank God there at the at the side at the birth of Christ. We you see the little story about the drummer boy. I don't know. The Bible don't say there was a drummer boy there, but I can imagine maybe there's some young shepherds there, and I can rem I can imagine that as they hung, as they stood around the manger scene, their friend they praised God for a Savior that would be able to take care of all the sins of the world, because it would be great joy. You know Jesus Christ today. You have joy in your heart and life. You may have got a present and this morning or you may have got something and you opened it up and it had joy into your heart and into your life but there's nothing like knowing Jesus Christ because that joy is a is a just a moment of joy a time of joy maybe it's a new outfit maybe it's something to use in your house and you was excited about getting it maybe it's a diamond ring maybe it's a new car maybe we can go on and imagine but pretty soon that time will go away and that product that you have there, friend, will get to the place where it's, it's, it's not tangible to you no more. It's not of great joy to you anymore. But salvation is real and it's great. And it'll be with you forever and ever. I believe today when you're saved, there's joy. And joy in tribulation, there's joy in trials. Because we have Jesus Christ in our heart and our life. See, I was taught a long time ago that joy meant this. Jesus first, others next, and yourself last. If you'll put those in perspective and look at your heart and life, you'll, you'll find out that there's a joy that lies in your heart and life. As being, a, as being a Christian, if you put those things in order. But I can imagine as the angel stood there and then after he, he voiced the message that the, the holy the holiest uh, the, the angelic host came out and began to prepare it to the world and the Bible said they they, they began to say glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill toward men there's peace in knowing Jesus Christ people today don't understand peace there's they've looking for everything else to give them peace they've looked to Alcohol. They've looked to drugs. They've looked to pornography. They've looked to everything else in this world to give them peace. But the only real peace is in Jesus Christ. Those things will pass away. But the only real peace today is knowing Jesus Christ in your heart and life. We have problems, but there's peace today in knowing that God can handle any situation we have. But he said goodwill toward men. Christ didn't come to cause problems on the earth. Christ didn't come on this earth to... Uh, for destruction but he came to give life to everyone he came to give all the peace and the goodwill and, and people today seem like they're, they're shying away from the things of God oh how I wish that people would turn to God and find the true happiness well preacher I'm saved I don't, I don't go to church well shame on you let me tell you something today the Bible teaches that we should uh, join together as much more as we see the day approaching we should come together and pray and lift up each other in prayer and thanksgiving. Every day ought to be Christmas in our hearts knowing what the Savior done for our heart and life. It's not just a time we set aside to uh, remember Christ's birth. It may not be on the 25th of by history saying that it could be somewhere up in Mar. I don't know. But it's a day that's been set aside to honor the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And there's a day in Easter set aside to honor the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus from the grave. He came in this world sinless, and he left the world sinless. And he's coming back again for you and I. And suddenly the Bible said, and it, oh, excuse me, verse 15, the Bible said, 
And it came to pass as angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the, ch the saying which was told of them concerning the child. As they came, the Bible said, with haste. I believe when they heard the message, they came with haste. When you hear the message of salvation, you are to come to haste to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. The greatest thing today is knowing that you're on your way to heaven. That God has forgiven you of all your sins. He left his home on high. Left the, left the, uh, the, left the home in glory. Where all the pomp and circumstances going on and where all the... Uh, where everything's going on. He left all that to come down to here. To put off his robe. And friend, they come down on this earth and put on the robe of flesh. And friend, did I tell you something? Go through this walk of life so we can have eternal life. The Bible said, when they had seen it, they made known the saying which was told them concerning the child. I believe when you save, you want to tell somebody about the message of Jesus Christ. I believe you want to let somebody know how you feel about the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Don't set out in the coldness of the world and clam up, but the message needs to be told. Sometimes we get to the place today where we clam up when we should be telling the gospel story about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Once again, I heard a, I heard a story uh, Billy Graham had said. He was over at the uh, uh, one of the conferences uh, United Nations said that they, he was there and said the president, this was back when Nixon was president, he said another guy was there that uh, worshipped Buddha, said he stood, said the man stood and uh, gave his testimony of Buddha, how Buddha, how he worshipped Buddha and the things that he had done and he was reverent. Brother Graham said he stood up, he was proud to be a Christian. He said, you know, if somebody can stand up about Buddha, he said, we ought to be glad to stand up about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And tell others about what he done. He forgives us of our sins. See, he's the only way to heaven. Through Jesus Christ. There's no other way. A lot of people, they look through the world, look for the church to get them to heaven, look through every other means to get them to heaven. But there's only one way. And that's Jesus Christ. That's the reason he came on this earth to give us life. And give us abundant life. The Bible said that Mary, the Bible said, and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. They had, the Bible said, and all they that heard it wondered at all the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. She had thought about probably like I said, when she was expecting the child up to birth, through her birth, she had what probably pondered in her heart all the things that had already been told her. And the things as the angels came and the, the shepherds came and told them what had taken place. And the angels there from the day, the magnificent sounding of his birth, proclaiming the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was born. He said, but Mary kept all these things in her heart, all these things and pondered them in her heart. I believe she thought about it all the way through his life from the days he was at home from the days he was watched over from the days he had left the house and began his ministry from the day that he was on the cross of Calvary from the time that he was buried and the time of his resurrection she kept him close to her in her in his heart always we ought to keep the Lord and Savior close to us in our hearts each and every day we have lost loved ones we'd have to see them say so, you know the greatest gift today for uh, on Christmas day could you be giving your life to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That you could bow down right where you're at and say, Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinner. Would you come into my life and save me? We'd like to know if you did. All you've got to do is call us. We'd be glad to uh, talk to you and pray with you. We'd be glad to uh, visit you. Let me tell you, Jesus Christ is the reason for this season. We see that sign so many times, but it's the truth. The Bible said they, the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. We will be glorified, praising God each and every day of our life for all the blessings that he gives to us.
We went through Thanksgiving, and now we're here at Christmas. We ought to thank God each day for all the blessings that he has for us. I hope you and your family have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. Thank you for tuning in and taking time to watch this Christmas message. I hope something's been said and done that may be a blessing to you and your family. Remember, Jesus Christ is the reason for this season. We're going to have a word of prayer, and we're going to end this service. And if any time you need to get to us, Fairview Heights Northside Baptist Church will always uh, answer the phone. We'll, we'll be able, if you can call, leave a message, we'll get back to you. Any way that we can, any way that uh, possible that you, we can reach you. If you have a prayer request you'd like to leave with us, we'd love to pray for that prayer request. So, uh, thank each and every one of you for just tuning in. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the miraculous birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you for coming on this earth to give us life. Thank you for, it's not just for just certain people, but Lord, you said for all. For God so loved the world that he gave his son to all. Lord, I thank you, dear God, for everybody. Lord, I ask you now, dear God, to touch lives. Thank you for the meaning of Christmas and what it means to us. That it's the Lord is the reason for the season, the birth of that baby in a manger. Lord, I thank you. Thank you and praise you for who you are. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen.